Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to yet another epi episode of the Wool Academy podcast and this is episode 109 and this is also again another flock wool recording. And that means that in this episode, like in the previous three episodes, I will be talking to Evan Thompson. He's the CEO of Flock Wool, a little wool trading company based out of Albania and I've joined this little startup in January and together with Evan and the rest of the team we thought it might be interesting for you to follow along how we endeavor on this journey of starting a little wool trading company in Albania and in this episode I will be actually doing more, most of the talking because Evan will ask me questions about the Albanian sheep and Albanian wool and I hope you do enjoy this episode and let's dive right in. Okay Evan, we're meeting again for another episode to talk about our journey at Flock Wool and last episode we talked more about Albania and we started a little bit talking about the Albanian uh, sheep and wool industry and closely connected to that is also to talk about the Albanian sheep and their wool as such and Today, we decided that you would be asking me the questions and I would try yes. to answer them as best as possible. We will, we will switch slightly here. Yes. So, uh, yes, Elizabeth, so you, uh, you were um, very excited to join us in, in late January in the cold, rainy, uh, uh, southern Albanian weather in January. Um, but yeah, we, we traveled, we were able to travel all over, the, all over the southern region with you. We saw, I don't know how many sheep. 10,000 maybe, um, and, and, you know, dozens and dozens of uh, shepherds. Um, but yeah, let's talk about um, Albanian sheep. So let's start with, you know, what are, what are the typical breeds in Albania, especially the ones that, that, we're, that we're focusing on and hoping to uh, um, uh, get wool from? Yeah, and before I start talking about the sheep breeds that we uh, encountered in Albania, for me, it's always the best part if I can visit a country and actually get to visit the sheep because this is my office and I always every day I work for wool talking about wool writing about wool and the best part is when I actually get to go out to the field and touch a sheep and photograph a sheep and just see everything so that was really an amazing journey that we did together um, in January when we went around meeting a lot of shepherds and seeing their sheep and that's where we learned a lot of things about uh, the Albanian sheep. So you asked about what breeds do we have? And when we did our research beforehand, we actually found out that there are like three typical sheep breeds, which is the Badoka, the Ruda, and also the Tsigai. But then when we were on the ground, we mainly only found the Badoka and the Ruda. So if that's okay for today, I will only kind of talk about those two sheep breeds because we didn't really get first-hand experience with the <laughs> Tsigai. Um, and these are also the two sheep breeds of which we will collect wool um, for flock wool. So I, I will focus on those two. So the Ruda is a popular sheep that has, um, and I'm going to talk in micron, so a, a wool that has on average th around 33 microns um, so that is more of a uh, not not a very fine wool but also not the most uh, coarse wool and it has around a fiber length of 8 to 10 centimeters and these sheep are mostly more in the north of Albania if, if that's how we didn't find that many baduk, um, that many ruders in the south of Albania, where we were mainly uh, driving around, if I remember correctly. And um, they're slight, they're more central, central more, more yeah. central to the country. Yeah. And and the wool is quite white, and the sheep look quite fluffy. That's how we remembered them. And then we did see a lot of badoka sheep, and they have. They're quite popular more in the south where we were and also up in the mountains. And they have a fi fiber diameter that's much, much more coarse. It's on average 43 micron. And what is very special about these sheep is that they have a very, very long fleece. So 
around 15 to 20 centimeters long. So I actually uh, managed to get some wool here uh, with us. And you can see, so this is Badoka, so you can already see how long it is. Um, and it's not fully uh, white, it's, it's a little bit yellowish um, and yeah, quite coarse. But this uh, very coarse wool is actually nice for these sheep because they have to go out into quite cold weather. So um, it does protect them well from the cold temperatures. And what struck me um, during our visit was that, of course, in, in the wool industry, we often want to always strive for finer wools because they can, you know, sometimes even go into garments and not only into um, more technical textiles or interior textiles. So, you know, you and I were like, oh, we need to find more rudas or we need to have more ruda sheep. And then we asked um, some of the shepherds, oh, would it be possible? You have all, all these bardokas here, but can't you switch to rudas because then we can have more of that wool? And, and then I kind of like was like, you know, had this aha moment because the, the shepherd said, oh no, uh, we can't, you know, change to the ruder because the badoka is much more hardier and they need less food and they're much more well um, adapted to, you know, the, the countryside that these shepherds are, are rearing their sheep. So, you know, that I thought I felt kind of stupid because we were like, looking at this very practical oh yeah then we just switch mm. and then we have a solution but shepherds are you know have been doing this for years and years and they know their sheep and they choose the sheep that fit the countryside so that the sheep do well yeah. that they can stay healthy um that they can manage well and you know they have to climb high mountains in the summertime that they can you know have enough food um so that was for me kind of a aha moment that we find the sheep that are suitable to the land and that's also mm. as a business that we need to deal with and work with and ensure and that also ensures that these animals will be healthy and well fed etc so that was kind of a you know you were going on on a, a journey to learn so that's what i learned from that visit yeah well, I mean, and fundamentally, like, obviously, okay, it makes sense in this moment right now. Okay, boom, we wish we had a million rudas and, and wool on, you know, containers and we could sell that wool. That'd be, that'd be an easier sale tomorrow. Um, but but what's, the right, what's the right path to be a sustainable business, to offer a sustainable solution um, that, that, that connects the right product fit with the actual product that is working, you know, in some ways, right? Um, so the, the, the product, if we're calling the, the Bardoka a product in general for the Albanian environment, um, it's okay, well, it's, you know, incumbent upon us to find and to be more creative and, and think it's easy to say, oh, change your sheep to this, that makes more money today, you know. Um, but, okay, what, you know, where can we find uses for the Bardoka? Where can the Bardoka add greater value um, uh, as it's already the, the right value, right fit, right efficient unit for um, well, not the entire country, but part of the country, right? You know, the, the, the more mountainous environments, which is where we were in the South. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. No, no, I have Continue. to learn that you are asking the question. So. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, the one thing, uh, or at least, you know, and again, I, in a way, I'm still kind of, you know, a beginner about this. When it comes to more of the wool industry stuff. Um, the, the 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 but when I do talk to people, um, I the one thing that I've done that's been useful in communicating, at least at my level, to you know other people and who don't have that much knowledge about wool or sheep, which does account for the majority of the world, of course, um, is to say, okay, well, you probably know something about Australia or New Zealand, you know, the sheep there, right? So, um, how are how is the general uh, environment different in Albania compared to what most people would think about with wool operations or wool business in Australia or New Zealand? Uh, specifically about, you know, how much do these sheep produce? Um, how did the sheep live? How are they kept? Uh, how many does the shepherd, uh, how many sheep does the shepherd have? You know, stuff like that. How does that compare to the, the environments most people are familiar with? Yeah, 
Yeah, no, that, those are good questions. And, and you're right that um, like, like, because I used to work for, you know, the international wool industry at IWCL. So I got to work with a lot of Australians, New Zealanders, South Africans who run um, big sheep operations. Um, you know, they have thousands and thousands of sheep often and it, they have a farm and they have their sheep on that farm and everything kind of happens, happens there. And that was for me quite different in Albania. And I kind of felt this is like more like the very original, like how it used to be in the old or ancient times because um, the shepherds, like there were always two shepherds staying with the sheep outside in the field. The shepherds would sleep in a very small little hut that kind of, you know, looked self-made and put together out of different, um, all kinds of materials. And they would, you know, keep this little fire to keep warm. Also drink some, is it Draki? It's the local- Raki, yeah. Raki, Raki, the local <laughs> alcohol uh, liquor there um, to keep warm as well. Um, so, you know, what they, and then they would take the sheep once it was around 10 o'clock in the morning, then they would start leaving their night camp and start, you know, moving across a quite a large distances to um, let the sheep graze and, and different shepherds would graze on the same fields, but at different times and they would, you know, sometimes cross each other and meet and talk with each other. Um, so that was quite different and, and it was also for us, you know, we had to actually start at six in, in the morning to, you know, start and meet with the shepherds in their night camp because otherwise, you know, they were all over the place and, mm -hmm. and we couldn't uh, catch them and talk to them. Um, so that is quite different and as I understand it, often the shepherds that are staying out with the sheep are not necessarily the owners of the sheep. So, um, hmm. but I guess it, they're both cases. Um, so they might work for someone who's, who owns the sheep. And the, the size of the flocks were, are on average between 100 and 300 sheep. And, and there's something I, I learned uh, at some time ago when, people, when farmers or shepherds talk about the size of their flock, they always, mention the number of ewes. So they would say I have 100 ewes or 300 ewes. Um, so the, female, the number of female sheep, because the number of that on top of that, would they would have at some part of their, the year, they would have the lambs that would be additionally to that flock. And they also have a number of rams. Um, but I guess in, in order to compare flock sizes, it's easier to just stick to the number of female sheep that you have. Mm -hmm. And then I guess shepherds are then know how to calculate like the overall size of the flock. But the, the average size is around 100 to 300 views. And in total, we researched that in Albania, there are around 1.8 million sheep. Mm -hmm. And maybe to put that into perspective, um, Australia, has 68.1 million sheep during the last season. So yeah. <laughs> it's 1.8 million versus 68.1 million sheep. So that kind of puts things maybe into, into relation. Mm. Um, and what is also a little bit different is that the average um, size of how much wool you shear off one sheep is 1.6 kilos. And also to have like a number to compare this with, with is in Australia, the average fleece um, weight is four kilos. And that kind of shows that in Albania right now, at least, shepherds are not so much focusing on the yield of their wool because they're not making any money of it. So they're not mm -hmm. totally, you know, focusing on, on having a nice fleece or having, uh, you know, a lot of quality, uh, quantity on the sheep when they select for breeding. Um, but that's also made means there's potential to, you know, invest more into, into 
that my thoughts through. exactly it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a limitation for today but it also means it's something that can be improved quite dramatically yeah and i i was doing a little bit of research before we talked today and you know in in australia some growers have you know bred sheep that do very well for example in the outback sheep that need to walk a lot of distances and they can you know grow up to 10 or even more like I, i've also read some rams might produce even 18 kilos of of wool uh, in one year so um yeah that has to do with size of course and how mm. how uh, they select for breeding and how much emphasis they put into the development of of the fleece so um but at the moment it's on average 1.6 kilos per animal so we can maybe count around 2.9 million kilos of wool within albania as total hopefully we will see <laughs> yeah. um so speaking of that wool um uh you know uh, what what is the shearing process in, uh, in albania right now right so um if, if the wool if, if nobody's selling wool um they're still being shorn why are they being shorn and how is that being done yeah so sheep have been um bred in such a way that they do need to be shorn of course there are some sheep breeds that lose their fleece um but in albania the badoka and the ruda are sheep breeds that do need to be shorn and they are typically shorn in may or june that's also when it's you know nicer weather and and so the sheep can be relieved of their warm wool and uh, the sheep are shorn by the shepherds themselves and they just do it you know where they camp in the field and that's also where we saw a lot of the wool just being dumped into the not like just lying there on the grass yeah. and and rotting along and it's not i mean it's okay for the wool because it to be there because it biodegrades so there's no mm -hmm. harm for the environment but it is sad because it is a resource that can be used um but right now the, the they, utility the utility even of wool that is being thrown on the ground was still so obvious because all of the dogs yes <laughs> the wool as a bed <laughs> yeah that's true we saw a lot of dogs sleeping in the wool and of course wool is also a fertilizer actually yesterday i was buying fertilizer for my tomatoes and half of the product is is made of wool so it is a great fertilizer so it does do some benefit on the grass to you know next year there will be uh, lots of healthy nutritious uh, grass but yet there would be a better use for it and of course also you know it takes time to shear the sheep um so the shepherds you know are not being they don't get any value for the work they they need to do for the shearing and yeah and once like maybe also we can talk a little bit about how you know the typical year of of uh, these sheep and i touched upon it a little bit already so between um may june and november these sheep mm. with their shepherds go up into the mountains um where i guess it's a little bit cooler for and they it's more accessible in summertime and they graze there in the mountains and then they come back down into the more flat plains i guess you call it the terrains mm. um for their night uh, winter camps and stay there between yeah december and may again and that's where they still roam freely and um you know go to different pastures every day but they don't go high up into the mountains mm. so i thought it was quite also that's a very different lifestyle for these shepherds because during the summertime they are away most of the days um in in the camp in, in the mountains away from their families and i know gatti's um one of our colleagues uh, who's the, the expert and the farmer his brother for example he goes every summer up into mm -hmm. the mountains with the sheep and and you know then we hear you yeah, know we need to wait for him to have cell uh, <laughs> reception until yeah. we can get in contact again well that was why i, I bought him a, uh, a a solar panel oh yeah and I, and I brought him that solar panel yeah so so he could recharge yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and of course, also from an animal welfare perspective, um, Albania follows um, the EU regulations and recommendations for veterinary purposes. So each sheep sees the vet two to three times per year. And of course, if a sheep is sick, the shepherd calls the vet vets and they come and check out everything. So the sheep are ensured to be healthy and well fed and well kept. So let's, uh, let's maybe conclude here with a, a lighter note. Um, what is the word for wool in Albanian and why does that present such a problem for our colleagues to speak professionally on the topic? <laughs> yeah, that was something we learned in the conversation with Albi and Getty that for them to talk in Albanian about wool is very difficult because the word for wool in Albanian is lash. And the word is somehow, for, I don't know, for some reason used as something like, you know, to, yeah, so, a, a poly, how do you say, a poly, sorry for my French. So it's, yeah. It means crap or something similar. Mm. So yeah. for them to talk professionally about wool, they, to them it seems they were always talking about crap or something like that. So yeah. I don't know how that, develop do you know more or the yeah like the i think one of the the main uses or uh, in a phrase would be or, or the, the or the the general phrase is oh you've really messed things up you know and you know or you've really wooled things up mm, okay. everything has gone woolly like it, it's to it's to connote things have gone bad it's it's been messed up um okay. So yeah, the, it, it constantly is this is this very uh, uh, joking, but like funny, you know, but silent, like both negative and funny, you know. So it it immediately connotes two things that that just aren't very effective. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we've embraced it, you know. We just go okay, let's just go for it, you know. Like uh, you know, you can't you can't dance around it. So yeah. So hopefully we can change the perception. Of less. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or or at least provide, you know, a duality to it, right? Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. And maybe the other aspect we should talk about when we speak mm. about Albanian sheep is the other products that sheep produce and that are quite oh, of course, yeah. important in Albania. Um and yeah, to be honest, yeah, we ate a lot of sheep milk products mm -hmm. and we also ate um, some lamb and quite deliciously made like we visited um, Gerti's family up in the mountains mm -hmm. and they provided a meal for us and pretty much everything was homemade and homegrown and home raised <laughs> yeah. so they made you know their own butter and cream cheese and sour cream etc uh, and cheese from their own sheep and also goat milk Mm -hmm. And they did a barbecue uh, where they roasted um, a whole lamb for us. And yeah, nothing really goes to waste. And from what we learned also from Albi is that it's very, very popular and very common to be eating dairy products made from sheep milk as well. Mm -hmm. um, and he even said that pretty much all Albanians who live in a city know someone who lives in a village and is connected to farming and they would you know regularly call them up and say oh next time you come you know come to saranda can oh, you bring yeah, us yeah, yeah. some milk yeah. um can you bring us and they say they also do that for you know eggs and and other vegetable products etc but then they get like so with albi he would call gatti and gatti would bring three or four bottles of fresh sheep milk and then we told us, well, so the best is when you actually just boil the fresh milk for five minutes and then drink it. And that's like very common. And then the other things families do is that they also make their own yogurt out of the boiled milk and also even their own butter. And then of course, there's lots of people who are specialized in doing, you know, their cheeses and their sour creams, etc. So there's a huge, you know, value chain of doing different products out of sheep milk. And it's, it's part of the, you know, daily menu and 
incorporated and eaten um, every day in, in their meals. So of course, that's why there are 1.8 million sheep because Albanians do use a lot of sheep milk. There, yes, uh, the sheep are, uh, are very useful in so many ways. And you said um, basically nothing goes to waste with the sheep and that is correct, except for the wool. Except for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and of so, course, the, yeah. And the other is of course the meat. They also eat mm -hmm. um, many different types of, um, there are many different types of recipes for sheep meat and especially lamb meat. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't, I think, Maybe we can share some recipes at some point, but yeah, yeah, yeah maybe maybe we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I've I've enjoyed I've enjoyed talking about wool, about Albanian wool today, Elizabeth. I don't know about you. Yes, I did. I it was people, very strange to be answering yeah, most of the questions. To, to, <laughs> yeah, I know that's this is not the usual thing, but maybe we'll do that again. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if uh, if people enjoyed it. I imagine they did. Um, I, hopefully, uh, uh, people learned about. Albanian wool and how it's different than some other types of wool, but at the same time can probably be probably be pretty pretty good. It'd be nice to have a nice uh, Albanian wool carpet, in my opinion. Yes, I'm hoping to that, see that someday. <laughs> that would be nice. Yes. Now it was great talking to you, and we hope yeah that we kind of gave some insights into something that not many people know about Albanian sheep and Albanian wool. <laughs> Well, all right. Yeah, we'll be back though um, soon. So this is now the fourth episode or I don't know, the fourth little segment we're putting out from, I don't know, we should probably call this something the, uh, the, the flock wool podcast because coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but okay. yeah, but we will be starting operations soon though uh, because Albania is opening up and, um, and, uh, and so that's very exciting. So. Uh, yeah, so let's yeah. talk about that in one of our next episodes. In, in future episodes, yeah. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Hi, I hope you enjoyed this little talk about Albanian sheep and Albanian wool. If you want to find out more, then head on over to the show notes at elizabethvandelden.com forward slash 109. And of course, you can also find more information about flock wool on the company's website, flockwool.com. I hope you will join Evan and myself also in our upcoming episode where we will be talking about the lean startup method and how we are applying it to the flock wool business. So actually, um, the episode is called One Container because that's the goal we have set ourselves for this year of just completing one container of wool. So I hope you join us and tune in, in when the next, when episode one or 10 will be launching. I hope you will be joining us in around two weeks time and I see you then. Bye for now.